Thank the Lord. Uh, we're going to start off in the book of Matthew, chapter 11. We looked at Mel Melchizedek Sunday morning. We're going to look at another man tonight, being the Lord's will. A very uh, familiar character in the Bible, name of John the Baptist. Anybody ever heard of him? <laughs> John the Baptist. Yeah, yeah, they did preach on him some Sunday night too, didn't he? Uh, he? He preached on one line, he said. We're going to go a little bit more on that, probably. So, Amen. Uh, Matthew 11, 11, 9. Are you there? Amen. Who was John the Baptist? Who? Yeah. Okay. Jesus tells. He says, But what went you out to see a prophet? So what was John the Baptist? He's talking about John here. A prophet. He was a prophet. Yea, I say unto you, you, and more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it was written. Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare the way before thee. What was that mentioned in Old Testament? Malachi, wasn't it? I think I got it here somewhere. Yeah. He said he would, yeah. Yep. Behold, I send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great day, of the dread, dreadful day of the Lord. What happened to Elijah in Old Testament? Did he ever die? No, the Lord took him in a, in a, in a whirlwind, didn't he? Yeah, took him in a whirlwind. A uh, chariot separated him and he took him up in a whirlwind. So he said, I'm going to send him back and, and, and get this now. I'm going to read a little bit more here, but in, in 2 Kings, listen to what uh, Elijah wore. He said, he was a... a a, ray, uh, a hairy man and girded with a girdle of leather about his loins. In Matthew 3, it tells of John what he wore. John had his raiment of camel hair and a leather girdle about his loins. <laughs> so, he, he, they dressed the same. <laughs> uh, John, when the spirit of Elijah, that's what he's going to tell us here, came back, he dressed the same way he did in the Old Testament. <laughs> the man, that'll give you a hint who he was, right? All right, let me go on with this. Um, verse 11, 11. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of woman, there is not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than him, he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and that violence taketh it by force. For all the prophets and the laws and the law prophesied until John. And if you receive it, this is Elias, in other words, Elijah, which was for to come. He that has ears, let him hear. All right? So, He's telling us who, who John was and explaining that he was the one coming to prepare the way of the Lord. Right? That's what he did. So what was John's message? Let me read it to you. Here's what he preached. In Luke 3.30, 3, you don't have to turn to all these. I'm going to go through them pretty quick. There's four of them. He came into his own country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Mark 1.4, John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Acts 13, 24 says, When John had first preached before his coming the baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. Acts 19 says that, Then said Paul, John verily preached with the baptism of repentance. <laughs> what did John preach? The baptism of repentance 
for the remission of sin. Think about that now. Think about that. The baptism, being baptized and repentance, is that what the Bible says takes away for the remission of sin? No. Without the shedding of blood. Let me, let me read you, okay? What is remission anyhow? Remission is forgiveness, pardon. That is the giving up of the punishment due to the crime as the remissions of sin. Jesus, matter of fact, when he drank of the cup, he said he did that for the shedding, for the remission of sins. Okay? And Hebrew tells us, and also all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sin. So, when the Pharisees and Sadducees asked Jesus, why, how do you do this, and what authority do you do this in, what you're doing? And he said, I'll ask you something. The baptism of John, is it of man or from heaven? Why couldn't the Pharisees answer that question? I, I'm getting in some stuff here. You ain't thought about this stuff. I know a lot of you haven't, because I haven't. Why could they not answer? They said, what did they say? They said, we, we don't know. That's what he said, wasn't it? And he said, I ain't going to tell you either, pretty much what he said. But why couldn't the Pharisees? I mean, here, here is the, the scribes, here is the, the most studied minds of the Word of God, the Old Testament. And the shedding of blood, it tells there, they know that the only way for remission of sin, forgiveness of sin, doing away with sin, is the shedding of blood. So here's something brand new that they'd never seen before. And here's a man out in the wilderness preaching what? Preaching the baptism of repentance for the remissions of sins. Contrary, totally out of the water. <laughs> Where do you get this at? And I thought about it. I prayed. I've been praying <laughs> all when he gave me this. Lord, that's not according to your word. This, what's going on here? Why is John, uh, now, get this now. In Luke, it tells us that, in, in, around the in first part of Luke, that his daddy, Zechariah, right? Yeah. Was in there burning incense, and the, and the angel appeared to him, and he told him, that John, when he was born, he would be full of the Holy Ghost. So John was a man of God. Don't, don't think that. He knows what he's talking about. When God, when God sent him, he sent him and he preached what God told him to preach. Preaching the baptism of repentance and the remission of sin. Now, don't forget what is his main purpose as the spirit of Elijah is upon him and in him. I don't know how that worked. God did. He worked it out, though. What, what was his main, why was he there? Main purpose. To be the forerunner. To, to he's, he's getting people ready. He's getting them ready. Listen to what he says here. Let me, let me find it. Let me find my scripture. Too many scriptures. Okay, here. Let me read Acts 9 again. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is, on Christ Jesus. What he was doing was pointing them to the one that was coming. The one that was coming. Anybody ever heard of the word ordinance? You know what ordinance is? Ordinance is observed commandments. Observed 
commandments. How many knows that churches in their doctrinals have ordinance? They have observed commandments that they go by. A lot of churches have the same ones we have. We've got two that we have as free will Baptists. We have observed commandments. In other words, they're commandments from the Lord and they're outward things that we, He wanted us to do. Anybody know what first one, one of them is? Jeremy knows what them probably are. Yeah, one of them's communion and foot washing. Why is that? Because he told them, didn't he? When he was drinking from the cup, he said, do this. As often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me, my death. It was something he said to do. It was a commandment he said to do. See? So that's an ordinance that churches still do. We haven't done it in a while because of this corona thing going on. Didn't think it's a good idea to pass around the crackers and everybody's hands in it. <laughs> I know, God would have blessed, I know that. But we're trying to use wisdom. Okay? So, uh, we do do communion here. Communion, we do foot wash too. Okay, what was another one? There's another ordinance. One other one. What did he say in the last verse of Matthew? One of the last verses. Go ye into all the world. What? Preach the gospel. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Baptism. That's the other ordinance. Because he said to do it, right? Go and do that. That's what he said to do. So we see John the Baptist as the first one applying the ordinance of baptism. You get that? That's what he's doing. That's what he's doing. He's not baptizing them to do away with their sins. He's preaching there and he wants them to know that they have sin. Right? So cause, see, because how can you come to a place where you ask forgiveness of sin if you don't think you have any? What about the Pharisees and Sadducees? Didn't Jesus, what was he talking to one of them about? About them being blind. Remember that? And, he's, and one of them said, pretty much, I'm not blind. One of the Pharisees. He said, I'm not blind. He's talking about him being blind, them being blind. And he said, I'm not blind. And Jesus said, because you say you're not blind, you still remain in your sins. What? What's he talking about? Because see, he didn't realize. He thought because he was a seed of Abraham that he didn't have no sin. See, I don't care. All the Pharisees and all the Sadducees and everybody's ever been born of a woman has sin. And we know we've told it over and over that the Mosaic Law reveals that sin. So we got to understand that we do have sin and watch what John was preaching and trying to tell the people and they kept coming to it. Just a man out in the wilderness preaching. What? <laughs> Baptism of repentance for remission of sins. In other words, here is a something that's going to stick with you. You're going to get baptized. You're going to confess your sins that you're a sinner first. Then we're going to baptize you. And then, I'm pointing you on to the one that comes. Because when he comes... He won't baptize you with water. He said, He'll baptize you with what, church? The Holy Ghost. That's right. Amen. See? And that's what happened when you got saved, wasn't it? You got bad. Jesus came, forgave you your sins, but you realized before you even come to Jesus that you needed forgiveness of sin. See? And that's what John the Baptist was trying to get people to understand. He was trying to get all of Israel that 
would listen to him, they understand that they needed a Savior, see? Amen. They needed a Savior. And that's what all the Messiah, the Christ, was all about. They didn't understand that. They was looking for somebody set on a throne to deliver them from the Roman Empire. But Jesus didn't come to deliver them from any empire of this world. He come to deliver us from the power, the empower of the devil, praise God, to destroy the works of the devil. Now next time he comes, he will deliver us all from all the empires of the world and set up his own. That's another message. Amen. So, it's not strange what John was actually doing. Trying to get people to realize their lost condition. So we as Christians, what do we need to do also? Before our loved ones ever going to get saved, what do they got to come to realize? Before you got saved, what did you realize? You was a sinner. You think the world out there realize? You hear them talk? You think they realize they're a sinner? No. They don't, they don't realize they're a sinner. They don't realize that. They've got to be, that's got to be revealed to them. Because see, only after you realize you're a sinner, then and only then, and it don't matter how much you realize you're a sinner, you can't take your sins away. You can repent of it all day long. But I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I ain't going to do that ever again. Anybody ever said that when they lost? I'll never drink again. <laughs> Next week, right there. Don't, 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 don't. Right? Because just like Judas is scary. Who did he go and repent to? He went back to the Pharisees. <laughs> Throwed it down at it. He went to the wrong one. <laughs> you and I and the world has to realize, and we do, we do realize as Christians. See, when I was 27 years old, I went to the right one. <laughs> I went to the right source. I realized I was a sinner. And the only one that could take my sins away was Jesus Christ. And he did that. On that day, I knelt down before him. Took him away. See, in the Old Testament, they used to use animal sacrifices. But they would bring the animals because... They believed what the Word of God, the Mosaic Law said. So even just the very act of them coming showed the faith that they had, right? So when we come to Jesus, when we make that first step or we bow on our knees or our heart is right and the Lord here sees that we believe in Jesus, that's when he moves in and saves us. That's when the Holy Ghost, he brings the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God does all the work, cleanses us, keeps us, leads us, guides us even afterwards. And even after you get become a Christian, you, God reveals to you when you sin. Right? He reveals to you when you see it. Aren't you glad? And He shows you what to do. It's called repent. In other words, you don't do it anymore. You don't do it anymore. Hmm. That's what John the Baptist is preaching. And that's why it's important. It's one of the ordinances. Jesus came to John the Baptist, didn't he? At the very beginning of what? His ministry. 
went down to the river of Jordan. What was John doing? Baptizing. And Jesus came to him. He, did John know who he was? He knew who he was. He's his first cousin. <laughs> I don't know if he realized that he was the Savior until the Spirit of the Lord showed him. I don't know when he realized it. But he did realize it because he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. That might have been the day after. I don't know. I don't remember. It was the next day, yeah. But he got a witness because the Spirit of God already told him what was going to happen. And evidently, John knew before he baptized him because when he came to him, John said, I don't need to be baptizing you. You need to be baptizing me. So he had, oh, no, man, here, here he is. And he baptized him in the river Jordan. Took him under. Brought him back up. Remember the witness? A dove. Spirit of God. Holy Ghost. Came down and lightened upon him. Jesus. <laughs> it's probably a light in the shape of the dove. And if that wasn't enough, what was it? A voice rang out of heaven. This is my beloved son, whom I am well pleased. Hmm. Glory. <laughs> the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The Trinity of God, all in one place. Power of God, right there. And what was it all in one place for? The baptism of his son. <laughs> Of his son. Now, I've testified this before. I want to testify again because the Lord told me to just now. I think I was a Christian for six months before I got baptized. That's my phone, don't worry about it. And I wasn't living the way I should, but I was ignorant. I didn't know any better. I was still living with my girlfriend. And it just so happened that the pastor of the church I was attending, his daughter was my girlfriend. Let's <laughs> think about that situation he was in. I, I, see, I didn't understand all this then. He was in a hard spot. <laughs> Here's a young man living with his girlfriend. He's the pastor of the church. I said, and the Lord impressed on me to be baptized. He said, I'll baptize you Sunday night after service. Sunday night after service, everybody left. It's just me and him. <laughs> I got baptized in secret. <laughs> but it wasn't in secret to God. Because, Brother Jeremy, right after I got baptized, I'm telling you, I, I was saved, okay? I was saved. But right after I got baptized, God moved mountains that I couldn't move. I mean, his daughter run me off, which was a blessing. I couldn't do it myself. So it was a blessing. Then other blessings. And this blessing, I don't know, just opened up the floodgate. And I started going to church after that with my, my family over at Salt Lake, Free Will Baptist Church. And got really involved and started singing. And Junior Arnett told me I couldn't carry a tune in the bucket when I first started singing. <laughs> I didn't know it. I was just having a good time. <laughs> I kept on singing. Amen. Do a little better now, hopefully. Amen. But the Lord bless me. And three years later, He called me to preach. Hmm. <laughs> it's because of obedience to God. Obedience to God. 
And I'm thankful that we have men, women in the Bible to look to for our examples. See, you take communion, foot washing. That, that, that something wasn't something done in the Old Testament. It's something, it's a new ordinance that we do now. The church does now. It's the same way with the baptism. And I'm going to read one more scripture to you if I can find it here. Maybe two. <laughs> In 1 Peter 3, 21 says, The like figure whereunto even baptism does showeth also now doeth also now save us not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Is he saying water baptism saves you? No. No, he's saying the same thing I've been telling you about John the Baptist's ministry. Amen. It, it's, he's revealing unto you that you're a sinner. And because of that, then you get saved because you don't know you have that need until you're a sinner. All right. One more John. Romans 6, 3 says, Now unto know ye not that so many as us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism unto death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For if we had been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. When somebody, when you go down backwards in the water, what's that look like? That's you dying. It's an outward confession, a public confession. I believe. I'm a sinner. I got saved. I believe. I will be buried in water baptism and I will be resurrected in the newness of life. That's what he wants to do. That's why he wants. That's why he has that ordinance. Show the world. Show the world. When I was lost, I went to baptismal services. Anybody done that when you was lost? To watch your friends and loved ones be baptized. You might not, I didn't go to church. But I would go and watch a baptismal service. Because they asked me. It seemed pretty safe. Standing out there on the side of the bank. Watching. <laughs> but it still, it still gets you. I'm telling you, Lord, it still touch you. So it's a witness. It's a witness. I don't know how many people we baptize here. I see them come out of the water shouting. Shouting. Crying like a little baby. There's a blessing in it. That you can't get anywhere else. Amen. So I'm telling you, it's one of the, what is the ordinance? Observed commandment. Observed commandment of Jesus Christ. It's not going to save you. But it's a commandment he wants us to do. Right? Right. So, how many has participated in communion? Yeah, it's good, ain't it? Good. It's good. It really is. Amen. So, pray about that also if you never have. It's a blessing. It really is. Uh, we'll, we'll do it again pretty soon. Amen. We try to do it around Thanksgiving sometimes. So, maybe we can do it then if everything's cleared up. So, Amen. All right. Uh, that's the message. Amen. Uh, so hopefully, I know you, I, I don't know about you, but I've never, I never thought of this before. So I hope you're learning something. You're learning. Why would John preach that message? Why would he? It's contrary. Now you know, hopefully, why he would preach it. And you may come up with something better than that, so that's all right. <laughs> go, go ahead. Amen. Yeah. Until he watched my mom get baptized like a There you go. 
He cried like somebody was, was beating him with a stick. There you go. And I said, this can't be my daddy because my daddy never shed a tear in his life. Amen. He did, and he did something to me and Lanny that day too. Well, sure it is. It's he planned did, to see. He did something because my daddy was, I mean, he was just, I mean, he was crying like a, like a baby crying. And I yeah. thought, what, they got to be something to this. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, oh, yeah. It's it's one of his commandments. It is. I believe it is. Yeah. Now there's some Christians they don't have opportunity. God knows, you know. But if you do, then you'll pray about it and uh, see what the Lord. I, I guarantee you the Spirit of the Lord will lead you to it. I, I have no doubt about that. Amen. All right. Anybody else got anything? Uh, Oh yeah, yeah. He he definitely bear working. I can I can I didn't see none of this happen. No. I can I can bear witness. I can bear witness he myself. Is the son of God. Yes. Amen. <laughs> and and John made clear. He said, I am not the Christ. Yeah, he told him, I'm I am not the Christ. So, Amen. And he bear witness who the Christ was, though. <laughs> not only him, but others, New Testament writers. And today you and I bear witness of who Christ is. I know who He is. Amen. He's my Savior. All right.